Welcome to the Methodist Church Guyana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Guyana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana District. Burbies, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission Linden as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles. The secretary to the district conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin while the treasurer of the district funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is to spread scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme is sanctify yourselves for mission, connect, give hope, restore, the church could be contacted on telephone number 592-226-1215. Our email address is guyanamethodist at yahoo.com. You can follow us on our YouTube channel and Facebook page as Methodist Church Guyana District and on Instagram as Methodist Guy 592 District. Every blessing.
our joy to have you with us today, worshiping our risen Lord and Savior and soon coming in. This is the 17th Lord's Day after Pentecost and we give God all the honor and glory that is due unto his name. He is our triumphant God. I am Reverend Brown Jose. I will be your liturgist or worship leader for today and we have bringing the anointed word of God, Reverend Mervyn Austin, Superintendent Minister of the Burbies and Maica Circuits. I kindly ask that you silence all distractions. Remember, our God is spirit and they that worship God, we are bound to worship God in spirit and in truth. So I ask that we set aside what we are doing and come into God's presence, prepare to receive what God has in store for you. And so we call this time of worship together as you participate with me. Happy are those who follow the ways of the Lord. God's ways are just and merciful. Those who follow God's ways are continually fed. In all they do, they prosper. Come, let us open our hearts to God's compassionate love. And even as we open up ourselves to the compassionate nature of the love of God, let us blend our voices in singing the hymn, Praise Him, Praise Him, number 55, in our voices. of the earth show forth 
your creative nature. And so God, we continue to reflect on your grandeur, your splendor. We continue, almighty God, through the calling of creation to contemplate your purposes for your world, for your people. And so God, while we know that you are the one who makes wars to cease, we know dear Lord, that there is no circumstances that are beyond your control and your remit. So it's because of that we press in beyond the challenges of the time and we say, worthy are you Lord, holy are you, King of glory, high and exalted one. We bless you Lord because of who you are. And so today it is our joy to stand and to, to tell of your goodness. It is our mission to stand, O oh God, in spite of the challenges that are bound and to say, Our oh God reigns. And so we ask that your reign will be established in all of our lives, that none will be exempt, Almighty oh God, from coming into contact with your glory. And Lord, even as we exalt you, even as we look at your, your nature, and we consider your, your love towards us. We humbly bow our hearts, O oh God, because we have not always responded to your call and to your purposes as people of God, as people of purpose, as people, O oh God, who are set on the course for a particular mission. There are many times, O oh God, where we have been foolish and we have allowed the counsel of your word, O oh Lord God, to be far removed from our minds. And so, loving God, we appeal to your good nature. And we ask of you, mighty God, that today you do not count our sins against us, but you extend to us once more that scepter of righteousness and forgiving. Forgive us, dear Lord God, today. I pray, loving Savior, that we will humbly tear our hearts open before you and cause you to examine us afresh. We pray, dear Lord God, that you will clear up the pollution from our lives, Almighty God. The places wherein we have denied you, the times when we have done things that did not bring honor and glory to your name, clear up the pollution, I ask of you, as we come unto you today, penitent. And we say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And so, God, it is on the merits of your goodness towards us that we stand affirm in this moment that, yes, our sins are forgiven. And we can say, thanks be to God. So, Lord, even as we close this, this time of confession, we pray that you'll give us singleness of heart, so God, a steadfast attitude, that indeed we will go purposed in your power to sin no more. In Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. That's a song that is bubbling in my heart just now. He reigns for ever and ever with wisdom power and might our god is an awesome god and when we consider the awesomeness of god it should prompt us to praise and so we enter into our time of praise through songs after that we will have our prayer of thanksgiving
the Lord. We thank you, God, for your presence that is among us, even oh God. We thank you, God, for the way you continue to mold us, continue to be there for us, God. We thank you, God, for the great breath that we breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. We say, God, come and dwell with us, even oh God. We thank you, God, for your grace and for your mercy, for your provision. We thank you, God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And you reign in victory. We thank you, God, that we can choose you at any time because you are God and God of all. And so we thank you this morning for what you continue to do in our lives. We thank you, God. Yes, indeed. I am overjoyed. I am still bubbling, bubbling, bubbling in my heart, you know, as we were led in such an experience where we use our voices, our bodies to give praise unto God. And so we fight ourselves a bit as we give attention to the ministry of the word and we pray together the collect. Let us pray. Oh Lord. We beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. We turn to Holy Scripture as we read from Psalm 1 and we do so responsibly. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and in all that they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is Father of Mercies in Your Word, number 166. I invite you to join me in the singing.
on Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 30 to 37. Glory to you, O God. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. Three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such a child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. We turn our attention or focus now to the revealed word of God, which will be brought to us by God's servant, Reverend Mervyn Austin. Let us pray. Bless now, O God, your word unto our hearts. And may your name be glorified in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be on top. Everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody wants success. For many, greatness is measured by their power and control, their fame and reputation, their status and position. While nothing is wrong with striving for success, Jesus noted that true greatness does not result from the successes and wins of life, or is it derived from the fame and reputation. Rather, true greatness is achieved when the followers of Christ live in peace, become the lowliest and the servant of all in the community of Christ. In the text, Mark chapter 9, verse 33 to 37, the disciples, like many of us, were concerned about greatness. Their concern came as Jesus was making predictions to the household church about his impending death and resurrection and teaching them about the life that they are to live after his death. The text Mark 9, 33 to 37 comes between the second and the third prediction of his death and resurrection. We are told that just after Jesus had made a second prediction of his death and resurrection in Galilee, and he and his disciples had left Galilee and were on their way to Capernaum, an argument ensued among the disciples as to who is the greatest. Jesus, noticing that they were arguing among themselves, waited until they had gotten into the privacy of the house and then inquired of the disciples, what is it that they were arguing about? We are told that the disciples did not offer a response to Jesus' question, but knowing that they were arguing among themselves as to who is the greatest, a subject that had the potential of causing division and brokenness in community, Jesus began to teach them about true greatness. Jesus said to them, those who want to be great must first be last of all and servant of all. Then in order to reinforce his lesson, he took a, a little child and put that child among them and said to the disciples that anyone desiring to be great must welcome one such child in his name. And whoever does that welcomes not only Jesus himself, but the one who sent him. Therefore, in community, greatness comes from accepting the lowliest of statuses and the willingness to serve others. However, the truth is, brothers and sisters, there are many who desire greatness and would go to all extent to achieve greatness. 
We have people who manipulate the process in order to attain a certain position in an interest to promote self rather than to serve the interest of others. We have those leaders who rival each other in the church, often over, over, over giftedness and faithfulness because they are seeking to get the admir admiration of others, thereby creating factions in the community of Christ. There are many who have worked hard with no recognition, and as a result, they have become angry and bitter, and even more to the point of going to extremes to be recognized. We are pastors whose greatness is defined by the edifice in order to be recognized rather than service servanthood. Sisters and brothers, while, not, while nothing is wrong with wanting to be great, the moment, the moment our understanding of greatness becomes about power and control, status and position, and the raising up of self to be recognized and served, we are no longer seeking to live in peace by adopting a posture of lowliness and servanthood, but contrary to that posture, we are creating tensions and factions and divisions in the community of Christ. Therefore, Jesus taught that whoever would be great among you must be servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. As a matter of fact, he went forward, he said in Luke chapter 2 and verse 26, Let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. He said in Matthew, The greatest among you shall be your servant. Therefore, Jesus makes it clear that we cannot have glory without the cross. Consequently, since all of us want to be great, I want to say to us this morning, that according to the text, Mark 9, 33 to 37, if there is anyone listening this morning that is seeking to be great, your focus must be on serving God and greatness will follow. The word of God tells us, but strive first to the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. In the text, according to Mark 9, 33 and 37, Jesus said to his disciples, If you desire to be the greatest, you must strive to be servant of all. And after saying this, Jesus took the nameless child and said, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. You see, brothers and sisters, Jesus does not say the greatest thing is in being a child. And he, he doesn't say that the greatest thing is being childlike. But what Jesus is saying is that greatness is to be found in welcoming the child. It is an act of service. You see, church, the child is a symbol of powerlessness and dependency. The child is a consumer and not a producer. The child in Jesus' day had no rights and no status and no econo economic value. But you see, my brothers and sisters, while the society viewed the child as a nobody, Jesus demonstrated that the true greatness is to be found in serving those who the world see as powerless and dependent. True greatness is to be found in serving the insignificant and the unimportant, the poor and the widow, the care and caring for the for your own children. True greatness is to be found in caring for the unwanted, the unborn, the, the sick, and the outcast. To those who can't do for themselves or express even an appreciation for our service, that is where true greatness is found. The story is told of a little girl whose mother had died. And when the father come home from work, he would fix their meal. And then he would sit down with his newspaper and his pipe. Put his feet up on the mantel and read. And the little girl would come and say to him, Father, would you play with me? And he would say, no. 
I am too tired. I, I am too busy. Go out in the street and play. And this went on for some time. The little girl went out into the streets and she played. And she became a prostitute. And eventually she died. And according to the story, when her soul appeared at the gates of heaven, Peter said to Jesus, Here's the prostitute. Shall we send her away? Send her to hell? Jesus said, No, no. Let her in. But go find the father who refused to play with his little girl and as a result send her to hell you see my brothers and sisters so many times we neglect our children we neglect our youths and the elderly because we want to satisfy our own desires and to serve our own interests but Jesus himself said in Matthew 25, 40 to 46, that greatness is not to be found in our achievements, our accomplishments, and our treasures, and serving our own interests. But the true greatness is to be found in our service to the least of these. The hungry, the naked, the thirsty, the stranger, those who are in prison, the children, the elderly, the widowed and the orphan. And so my brothers and sisters, as I share the word of God with you today, I think about the man or the woman, the family member, the doctors and the nurses, the health care professionals who are being compassionate towards the sick. I think about the one who is bathing and changing and feeding the elderly and caring for the dying. They are the greatest. You see, my brothers and sisters, greatness puts others before self. Greatness denies the self. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but I came to serve. Greatness in the kingdom is not about me. It is not about my race or my ethnicity. It is not about one set of people. It is not about my country. It is not about my religion. It is not about my ability. It is not about my school. It is not about my repetition. It is not about my career. It is not about my accomplishments, my titles, or my status. Greatness is seen in the way we serve and care for others regardless of their reputation, regardless of the political affiliation, whether they can return the favor or not. When Jesus spoke, of loving, loving others in Luke, in Luke's gospel. He said, love others even when they don't love you. As a matter of fact, he went on to say, do good to others who do not do good to you. He says, he said, lend without expecting repayment. And he went on to say, invite to the dinner those who could, cannot invite you back. In those moments, Jesus was describing true greatness. See, brothers and sisters, greatness is seen in the boy who had the five barley loaves and the two fish. He offered what he had to Jesus so that the 5,000 people could have been fed. They did not give anything. They were hungry and they were fed. The little boy demonstrated love and kindness for neighbor through his giving. By, the, by this act of service, greatness was demonstrated. And so similarly, church, we are called to serve each other with what God has blessed us with. We are called to use our gifts and, and our, abili our abilities to serve others. Greatness is when we realize that we are recipients of God's grace and forgive those who have wronged us even when they have not asked for forgiveness and their attitude and behavior remains the same. Greatness is when we live in love and share that love with each other by refusing to be bitter and harbor envious feelings towards our neighbor. 
greatness results from being the voice for the voiceless when we tear down the walls of oppressive structures when we challenge the oppressive systems when we create space for the person who is different vulnerable and in need that is greatness so my brother my sister are you being great this morning are you seeking after greatness this morning? I say to you this morning that the only way to true greatness is a life hidden in Christ. You see, true greatness can only be achieved when our heart and our life is surrendered to Jesus Christ. Anything else or any other way is false. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the accomplishments. Don't be caught up with the treasures, the house and the land, the fame and the status. Those things have their place, but they are temporary. They are fleeting. However, I say to us this morning, that a life lived in devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ shall reap everlasting greatness. Sisters and brothers, choose Christ. If you are not giving your heart and your life to Christ, now is the acceptable time. I charge you to be faithful, to be a faithful servant of all. And that life lived in Christ is bound to succeed. Amen. The word of God has been revealed in our hearing today. What will your answer be? And even as you reflect, as I hope you are doing, we respond as we sing together, Make God Your Choice, number 224, in our voices in praise.
understanding full well that you bid us in all circumstances to pray. We have been, O oh God, urged through scriptures to pray without ceasing. And so, God, we come on that account. We come today, dear Lord God, bearing the burdens of the world, the pains, the sighs, and the heartaches of your people. Lord, times are challenging. Lord, hearts are breaking. Tears are flowing. And so today, mighty God, we pray that you will hear from heaven and heal our lands. God, we know that you're all powerful and we appeal to your nature, your might today. And we ask of you, Lord, to really put an end to this time of destruction. The coronavirus, almighty God, continues to, to change form. And even as that happens, oh God, we hear daily of lives that are being lost. Families, oh God, that are being shaken. Questions, almighty God, go out to you day and night. And so, Lord, I pray that you show forth your face and your purpose in this season. God, I pray even now that you increase our faith. Increase, dear Lord God, our interest in you. Increase, dear Lord God, our intention to stand on the authority of your word. I pray even now, Lord God, that you will release the resurrection power once again afresh into all the corners of the world that we will speak a word concerning this issue. And that that word, Almighty God, will be in alignment with your will. And yes, the rain of healing will fall. So God, we turn these affairs over to you today. And we ask, Lord God, that your hand of mercy will intervene sooner than later. God, we pray even now that even as life becomes a little bit more complex for some, the human element even makes it more complex so we pray against oh god injustices that are right in these times we pray against oh god the spirit of discrimination that is rearing its head in another form we pray against dear lord god the, the spirit oh lord of ignorance and we ask of you that your will be done and so as a church, I ask that you enable us to know that by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are empowered. We are empowered, Almighty God, to be the bomb in Gilead for such a time as this. So Creator God, I ask of you that you lead your church, that you use your church as the prophetic voice in sincerity. So gracious God, we look to you and we speak to you on behalf of every vulnerable population right now, which I believe constitutes all of us. We speak to you on behalf of the most vulnerable. We speak to you, dear Lord God, on behalf of those who daily are growing hopeless. We speak to you, dear Lord God, on behalf of those whose hearts are so hard that they have no time to even consider that there is a God. And we pray even now for a shifting in the atmosphere. That indeed this is a season where you will do something new and different. So we await your glory. So Lord we ask of you to come and have your way. We pray dear Lord God that you will come and you will speak the word. Speak a word. As we know that you are all powerful, all capable. And dear Lord God persons will come into submission with your will so lord we will patiently upon you even as our cries will go on to you without ceasing in christ's name we pray with thanksgiving
as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I greet you all again well, in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of humankind. I greet you on behalf of our district president, Bishop T. Kofi Nance, and all the members of staff of the Methodist Church Diana District. I greet you all wherever you have joined us from, right here in Diana or across the shores of Diana. There is always a welcome here. You are always invited to come and share times of worship, fellowship, and to delve into the word of God with us. So yes, indeed, we're happy that you took the time and we are praying that the word of God will find its right place in all your hearts. And so today, as we have come, we celebrate with those who have birth anniversaries or wedding anniversaries, or those who are experiencing any other kinds of events that are worthy of giving thanks for. So we celebrate with you your milestone moments and we pray that the favor of the Lord will continue to rest in a tangible way on your lives. Do give attention to the notices that pertain to our fellowship for this week and beyond. And so today, Sunday the 19th of September, we will have a special connectional service and the link to that service will be disseminated. And you can stay tuned to our Facebook page for that information or your congregational groups, WhatsApp chats. Next Sunday, September 26th will be celebrated in our congregations across the district as Education Lord's Day. And so yes, we're asking that our children be out. We will enforce, as always, the COVID-19 protocols that have been instituted by the Ministry of Health. We're asking that children come out in their school uniforms as we seek to fellowship and have good times in the Lord. Do note that our Bible studies continue each Wednesday at 17.30 hours. Thank you so much and do have a wonderful week under the banner of God's grace. And yes, the worship or this time of the worship has ended. But know that your service unto God and unto humanity continues. And so we'll sing our closing hymn, Who is on the Lord's Side, number three. I pray that you will pick your choice and you will indeed make God your choice.
from here in confidence and peace, joyfully serving the Lord who walks with you. Bring hope to the hopeless, joy to those who sorrow, peace to the afflicted. Be true witnesses to the love of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.